my little endeavor to entertain you and the rest of the world. find ourselves now in the interrogation area. The store customer does not come directly into the st uh, store proper. He comes first into the interrogation booth. This is the interrogation booth. Uh, I can come up on here and view the prospective customer while he is in the booth through several viewing ports uh, uh, to get the necessary information, financial, political, uh, from the customer. We interrogate him uh, at times using the basic interrogating uh, tools. Uh, on the other hand, uh, we keep up with the uh, latest uh, uh, innovations uh, in interrogating equipment, some that are being used throughout the world today. Uh, here we have an electric groin shocker. We find this very effective to get uh, whatever information is necessary to get uh, from the prospective uh, uh, client. Uh, we have a, uh, a form which we call the mutual disclaimer form, uh, which the customer keeps a carbon copy and, and we keep the original, in which we all disclaim any uh, political or any other things that, that may be embarrassing. Uh, 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 when one or more customers meet here. Every customer is fingerprinted. Every customer is uh, photographed. Uh, every customer, once he is interrogated, and assuming that he passes all of the qualifying uh, uh, tests and so on, uh, enters into the uh, store uh, via the tunnel. Every customer must crawl through the uh, tunnel uh, thusly, and of course, uh, having to comply with all the uh, ordinances, uh, they can leave via the fire escape uh, by uh, uh, crawling through the awning there. A store is a magnificent thing. You know, a store is a... a uh, a shop is a little shop you have with just a few little things, you know, a ladies there. A store is a masculine thing, a store. For the past several years of my life, I have only done what strikes my fancy, what pleases me. Um, such it has been uh, with the, uh, in all other uh, elements within my show business act, my entertainment act. And so it was uh, when I was a, uh, a practicing a painter, an artist. It so happens that, uh, that I, I failed, the, the act folded. Uh, I'm retired from show business now. Uh, uh, and so with the, with the painting, I, I could not make a go of it. Uh, so uh, with those, uh, so it is with the store. I've been working six months on the store to make it the finest store that I know how. I've spared no expense, no energy. And if, like the act, 
If, like the uh, uh, artist career, it, it folds, I, I will uh, only have done what, what I thought uh, was best and what struck my fancy. This is the Cheyenne Chats Dancing Lady. It's one of our mold pieces. This is the mold area. Uh, we have all kinds of mold pieces here. Uh, we have uh, the, uh, the plaques of, uh, and medallions that are worn round the neck. Uh, they come in the, uh, we have the presidential series with the Johnson and Goldwater, so as to offend no one. We also have the Monster series, monsters from 1 to 50 in number, just two of the monsters. All the, the monsters can be worn around the neck, too. We also have them in the conversation piece, all, all in the conversation piece, uh, which can also be doubled as a, a little uh, wall decoration. It can be uh, nailed into the wall. Uh, we have, if, in case it might happen to break, uh, for 50%, uh, percent we uh, will replace it. Uh, uh, this happens to be a, a Johnson one. And uh, uh, when it's used as a conversation piece, it is merely placed on the table of an ordinary home uh, uh, of itself, and it, it usually uh, produces uh, appropriate uh, conversation. Um, the store plaque, the Cheyenne Chats doll, perhaps you can see up, up top. Uh, here we have another fine item, uh, the Cheyenne Chats rat, which can be uh, hung over a uh, doorknob uh, placed on a table. The companion piece, the Cheyenne Chats mouse, sold singly or as a pair. I was a pre-med student in, uh, in school. I had six years of pre-med, and I've, I worked a total of 12 years in medical research, heart-lung um, machines and artificial kidneys and so on. And, uh, and I had an acceptance to medical school. This was some years ago. And I was going to UCLA, and the only course that I needed and that I was, the only science course that I was taking, I was enrolled as, as a pre-med, was uh, embryology, and all the rest were in the painting or uh, ceramics department, in the art department. And I became involved in this stuff, and uh, there was just one day where I, I felt, well, this stuff is real neat, and I just dropped the pre-med, sent them a letter saying that I, you know, um, you know, to count me out of their next year's uh, enrollment. And uh, so in that sense, that was a decisive step where I, I made, a, um, made a choice. And um, um, then th th there were waverings, because then I, I, um, I want to be practical about it, and um, uh, realizing and seeing that artists were starving, so then I, I thought I would compromise, and I would, then I, then I went to physical therapy school, and I thought, well, see, as a physical therapist, I could perhaps work part-time or not get too involved as it would be in medical practice, and I would then have time and energy left over to do artwork. And so that didn't work out, you know. I, I've never practiced physical therapy. I, I went to the school two years, and, um, and then just felt that wouldn't work out. But I, I then went back and to uh, earn money, I, I worked in, in the uh, medical research. I could always get a job with, in, in medical research you know, with various contacts and, and, and the, the background. And uh, about a year ago, I then finally made the decision with the act and, and the uh, associated um, works that I would, I would just not do anything more um, if at all possible, but, I mean, I, this would be the, the one thing, starve or not. Okay. Um, my purpose now is, or, or was, 
to, uh, to demonstrate the story as far as uh, imagining. Uh, however, I have decided, whether you will see this or not, I don't know, uh, to make it a two-fold demonstration. And the other is to show, in fact, that, um, that I, I only do uh, what pleases me. And we had a, a little disagreement as to the placement of these various objects on the Tower of Babel, which perhaps you can't see. And I was told to have the Bradley Hotel sign uh, in that area. And uh, now, uh, the, uh, I, I went to UCLA some years ago. And I was told by the instructor, as all the class was, to, uh, to, uh, for the final project to make a, a, a detailed self-portrait. And I did, and, and it so happened that after a week or so, the instructor or instructress told us to bring in our projects, finished or unfinished, for a little critique, uh, which I uh, complied with. And I brought it in, and my way of, of, of a painting in those days was to mix the paint uh, while on the, the canvas. Uh, in other words, I didn't mix them on the palette, and, uh, you know, uh, but I mixed the raw colors, placed them on the thing, and then mixed them up so until they assume the, the right intensity that I want it. And it so happens that on the day that I brought this painting into class, it was all finished except for the neck region. And the neck region was orange. I had not had a chance to mix the white and the browns uh, into it to, to uh, have it finished the way it is now. And I, I re remember the, the uh, uh, teacher uh, looked at it, and she looked back, and she walked back and forth, and she said, well, Mr. Schatz, that's very fine. She said, but, but you see, it's on two levels. The, uh, the neck is orange and flat, and the, the rest of the painting is modeled and in natural tones. It, it's, it's two levels. And so I said, uh, Miss So-and-so, mentioning her name, I said, well, uh, so on. I explained to her my technique of, of mixing the paints. And, and it would be finished on one level you know, when it would be finished. And I explained the whole thing again, and she stepped back and she looked at it. She said, well, see, it's, it's very fine, very fine, but you see, the neck is too orange, and it doesn't blend in with the rest. And I went through the whole thing again several times, uh, trying to explain that that's not how it would be. It was that how it was at that moment, but it would be different. And she never did understand, and it was just, an incident, w which I've run across other things, but I thought it was classic and eloquent, that no matter how you explain to someone and tell them that someday this object or this thing or this part of the act that you are showing them is not how it will be. It's just, you know, it will be entirely different. It, 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 has, it has come to me that um, anything that is different well, uh, uh, a certain thing like, like the, the uh, to, to just, you know, typify the thing. The public is easily frightened. See, they knew that if the, um, if the, um, um, if the, um, they came out with something radically different, you know, the public would be, oh, oh, that's all right. That's all right. Part of the act. Anyway, uh, um, Oh, so I, I, I have sensed through, through my act and, and have realized that you cannot frighten the public. In other words, anything that is a little different, they will either not acknowledge it or, or become frightened or so on. So I know that my stuff is different. And, and like the, um, the, the art gallery people recognize it's different. Therefore, they don't look at it. I mean, it's really different, you know, which good or bad. I'm not saying it's good, but it is bizarre, you know, for whatever reasons. You know, uh, in other words, it's constantly brought home time and time again that the people are so square and so, in that sense, like sheep. You know, as far as the relationship to, to me, you know, and, 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 and to my act, that maybe one percent, of, of a half a percent, will react and, and look at it, you know, and, and in that sense judge for themselves, you know. And, and they do not have to be told that, you know, as to what it is or, or might be.